Hey guys, this is Peroxide and this is Guide for Blood Death Knights for Legion Pre-Patch. Let's get through the talents. For the tier 1 level 56 talent you wanna go with Heartbreaker. This talent makes your Heart Strike generate more runic power, which later on converts into using your Death Strike more often. For the tier 2 level 57 talent, the best talent here is Rapid Decomposition, which provides you not only more damage when your death and decay, but 20% increased runic power generation while you are standing in your death and decay. Keep in mind that death and decay has been changed, it only has 15 second cooldown and you can reset it with Crimson Scorch so the uptime is much higher than what it used to be. Tier 3 level 58, in this tree you want to go with Osuri. This is by far the best choice in this tier. This talent reduces the cost of your death strike if you have 5 or more bone shield charges which again results into using your death strike more often. You can consider anti-magic barrier, but only if the encounter would one-shot you, so you can increase your stamina and surviving the hit. But overall, Osuri is the clear winner here. For the tier 4 level 60 talent, you want to go with Red Thirst. It reduces your strong cooldown Vampiric Blood. Just to do the math for you real quick, you spend 40 runic power per death strike and this talent reduces the cooldown on your vampiric blood for 2 seconds for each 10 runic power you spend, which means every death strike reduces the cooldown of your vampiric blood by 8 seconds. Moving on to tier 5 level 75 tree. This is a utility tree, so you have two options here. The first one, tightening grasp, which reduces your Gorfin's grasp by 1 minute and on top of that causes your death and decay to slow movement inside of it by 70% and the other choice is March of the Damned which increases the duration of Wraith Walk for 50% and causes you to break, stun, snare and root effects when used. You wanna pick Tightening Grasp for control on the adds and slows and you wanna go March of the Damned if you know you need to move long distances or you need to break out of CC. Tier 6, level 90. For all general fights, you should go with Fall Bulwark. It increases your max HP, making it so your death strikes heal you for more. It also has very good synergy with Osuri, which means you will have 5 or more Bone Shield charges to make your death strikes cheaper, like it was mentioned before. The other choice here is Rune Tap. If the fight will have consistent and high predictable burst of very high damage, you will definitely want to go with Runetap. Will of Necropolis gets a mention just because it's easier to get out of Purgatory when you proc it. And for the last one, tier 7 level 100 talent, the best choice by far here is Purgatory. It provides you an amazing boost to your survivability, however if you are very confident and you have no risk of dying at all, then you should go with either Blood Mirror for single target DPS or Bone Storm for AoE DPS. And that's it for the talents. Moving on to rotation. For the single target rotation priority you're gonna use your blood boil on your target and make sure you keep up the debuff called blood plague. Blood plague slowly drains the HP from your enemies healing you over time. Also on another great reason why you should always keep up your blood plague is so you can proc your crimson scorch. Crimson Scorch makes your Death and Decay free and it also resets its cooldown. So, you're gonna use your Death and Decay on cooldown and you're gonna make sure you also stand in it so you get that rune regeneration and the damage going. You're gonna use your Metal Rend and maintain at least 5 stacks of your Bone Shield. You're gonna use your Runic Power on your Death Strikes. I'll explain later how you properly use your Death Strike. It's very important because this is your main active mitigation. You're gonna use your Heart Strike if you have more than 5 Bone Shield Charges to generate more Runic Power, which can translate to using more Death Strikes. You're gonna use your Blood Wall if you can't use Metal Rend or Heart Strike to fill in the gaps in your rotation. And again, you're gonna use your Death Strike and make sure you don't cap your Runic Power. For the multiple target rotation, you're gonna use your Blood Wall on your targets and make sure you keep up the debuff since the blood plague heals you for each individual target making it so you heal for a lot on multiple targets. Cast death and decay on cooldown. One side note here, if you are using hard strike while standing in death and decay 
it will hit three additional targets, making it so we're hitting five targets in total. This is why Heartbreaker talent is really strong if you're hitting five targets with your Heart Strike. Use Metal Rent and maintain at least one stack of Bone Shield. If you have at least one Bone Shield charge, then you can use Heart Strike. The same as before, avoid capping Grunic Power, so you have to make sure you use your Death Strike. Right now we're gonna talk about Death Strike usage. The right way of using your Death Strike is to benefit the full effect from it. That means getting the healing effect on top of that physical absorption shield. So you never want to use your Death Strike if you're at full HP unless you're going to cap your Runic Power. You don't want to cap your Runic Power because in that case you're just throwing away your active mitigation. If you're in that kind of scenario just make sure you use your Death Strike even if you're already max HP just so you can get that physical absorption shield. Let's talk about personal cooldown usage. Starting off with Anti-Magic Shell. This is one of the strongest magic soaking abilities in the game. It lasts 5 seconds and you should always prioritize using this ability if you're going to be taking massive magic damage. By doing so you will also be rewarded by getting Grunic Power, which will be used for your death strikes. Next one on the list, Vampiric Blood. It increases your maximum HP by 30% and it also increases all healing effects done on you by 30%. It lasts 10 seconds. This is probably your most often used cooldown. You should use it pretty often just because of the talent called Red Thirst. When you spend your runic power using your death strikes, it reduces the cooldown of your vampiric blood for 8 seconds for each death strike. The next one, Dancing Rune Weapon. It gives you 40% parry for 8 seconds. You want to use this versus heavy auto attacks or versus multiple adds attacking you at the same time, making it so you have very high damage mitigation. Also recommend it if uh, the enemies you're dealing with have very high attack speed. And besides that, you can use your Dancing Rune weapon for DPS purposes if you know you're not gonna need it anywhere else in the fight. Um, and the last one here on the list, Bone Shield. It lasts 30 seconds, you get it for using Metal Rend. It reduces all damage taken by 20% and it also increases your haste by 10% which is your best stat. I'll get to that part later. The maximum amount of Bone Shield charges is 10. Metal Rend gives you 3 per use, so make sure you never use Metal Rend if you have 8 or more charges your bone shield because you're just gonna put the rest to waste. And that's it for the cooldowns. Moving on to stat weights. You have two ways of building up your stats, but you should always stick to strength, haste and critical strike. Because it's the same for both ways, like if you're building survival or if you're going for the damage. So that, that stays the same. There's very minor changes, so Versatility is better than mastery if you if you want to do more damage and Mastery is better than versatility if you want to survive more things But both of these stats are pretty similar So if you have the same you just want to go for the item level because strength is still your primary best stat Now let's go through the stats separately and what do they do? Strength that's your primary stat and it also gives you attack power Haste, it reduces your global cooldown, it increases rune regeneration rate, and it gives you faster attack speed. Third one on the list, Critical Strike. It gives you parry, that's your active mitigation. Increases your chance to critically hit with abilities, you can hit with your death strike, which would result into healing you for more. And obviously hitting with other abilities would result into dealing more damage. But that's about it. Moving on to Mastery. It increases your physical absorption shield from your Death Strike and it also increases your total attack power. And the last one on the list here, Versatility. It increases all damage you deal, all healing and decreases all damage taken. Moving on to Enchants, Gems and Consumables. For the weapon Enchants you've got two choices. One's Rune of the Fallen Crusader for DPS purposes and the other one is Rune of the Stone Skin Gargoyle for survivability. 
For the cloak, knack and ring you've got the same enchants, all gifts of haste, because haste is your best stat. For the chance you've got immaculate haste aladite, stays the same. Consumables, for the flasks you've got two things here, either greater genetic strength flask for dps or greater genetic stamina flask for survivability. And you might ask why stamina even a thing? Because the more maximum HP you have, the more your death strike heals you for. So I hope that answers your question. For the food you've got buttered surgeon, which is haste, and then potions, you've got two things again. One Trinaic Strength Potion for DPS purposes and the other one Trinaic Versatility Potion for survivability. And the rune is Stout Argument Rune which gives you 50 strength. The other side thing here is Healing Tonics and Shield Tronics. They both give you the same amount so depending on the situation you're in you should decide what you want. I've made a bunch of macros and weak auras for Blood Death Knights as well, so you can copy those things and make a lot of stuff easier for you to track or just, you know, the quality of life by using mouse over macros and whatnot. I hope that helps. And this was my guide for Blood Death Knights for Legion Prepatch. If you want to support me, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to ask any questions, feel free to do so by going in the comment section down below and ask away. If you want to support me in any other way, you can follow me on Twitch. I will be streaming our main raids in Hellfire Citadel, so you can check that stuff out as well. Or if you have any questions on the go, I'll be able to answer them. If you want to follow me on social media, you can do that by following me on Twitter and Facebook. All links are in the description, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.